Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's chemistry class. This is a video all about ionic bonding and how to name compounds that have ionic bonds. Okay, so this chart is sort of the basis of everything, and hopefully you know by now that whenever we're writing the formula down for an ionic compound, that we have a cation and we have an anion. The cation, positive one, always goes first. The anion, the negative one, always comes second. Okay? In order to determine what the subscripts are, you know, in our compounds, we have to know what the charge of the substance is. And so remember, metals, here's my really hastily drawn periodic table. Remember, metals are found to... Actually, I'll even draw in zigzag line. Um, but metals are found to the left of the zigzag line, and so this entire region over here is very positive, and this region over here where the nonmetals are to the right of the zigzag line are very negative. So if we're going uh, row and... Sorry, if we're going column by column... Our alkali metals have a plus 1, then we have a plus 2. Transition metals, well, they vary, and that's why we have to know what their charges are, or have to be given them. Uh, then we have our plus 3, then we skip it because we have our plus or minus 4, okay? We have a minus 3, we have a minus 2, we have a minus 1, and then at the very end of the periodic table, we have our noble gases, which don't really form compounds for the most part, okay? Um, once you know all of this information, then you can write down the name of the compound and even the formula of that compound. So following this flowchart, it asks about the cation. Does the cation only have one oxidation number? Oxidation number means charge. The only ones that we've talked about that don't have um, a single charge are these guys right here the transition metals. So if there's a transition metal present, then you have to make sure that you use a Roman numeral in parentheses in order to establish what that compound is. Whether we're talking about like iron 2 or iron 3, we need that Roman numeral in order to tell us. Other than that, if there is uh, only one oxidation number, then all you have to do is write down the name of the metal and then write the name of the nonmetal or polyatomic ion. Okay? So, recap. Go through the flowchart. Determine the cation and anion of the given formula. So determine which one's positive, which one's negative. Positive comes first, negative comes second. If the uh, positive cation, okay, if the positive one uh, only has one oxidation number, then you're good to go. You can just write down the name of the cation and then the anion. If not, then you have to actually put down a Roman numeral, and that means you have to figure out what the charge of that transition metal is. Okay? So to start off with, we're going to just look at names, and then we're going to write formulas next. So you will need a piece of paper for this, and the number is going to get a little weird, but we're going to go through them, and hopefully you can catch on, and uh, everything will be good. All right? So please get out a piece of paper if you haven't already. Okay, so hopefully you got your piece of paper. Write down these 10 examples, okay? Um, write them down. We're going to go over them very shortly, so you might need to pause it. Okay, first things we're going to do, we're going to underline all of the metals. We're going to go through and underline the metals. Remember, metals come first. They are our cations, so that means they have a positive charge. So, for example, I'm going to underline them in pink. We have Na, that's a metal, Na, Mg, K, Fe, that's iron, Fe, Zn, that's zinc, beryllium, chromium, and aluminum, okay? Now, I'm going to underline in another color the anion, the negative um, part of the compound. Sometimes it is a single anion, a monatomic anion, other times it is a polyatomic anion, okay, which means that they're one of the ones that you had to memorize. So right here we have CO3, OH, Br, Cl, 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 OH, SO4, F, and then S, 
Okay, those are our negative ones. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to write down all of the cations because that is just easy, it's simple, I can just look up the name. So I've got sodium, I've got sodium again, I've got magnesium, I've got potassium, I've got iron, I've got iron, I've got zinc, I've got beryllium, which I'm probably going to misspell, or not. I've got chromium, and I've got aluminum, aluminum, or aluminium, I guess, if you are in Britain. Okay, so, next, I need to figure out whether or not these have one oxidation number, that's charge, or more than one. So I've got sodium, yes, that has one oxidation number. I've got sodium again, yes. Magnesium, yes. Um, potassium, yes. Okay, now I get to iron. Iron is one of those transition metals, okay? Which means I have to figure out what the charge of that would be. Now we talked about crisscross, um, the crisscross method. We talked about crisscrossing charges. So in order to figure this out, I have to know the charge of the anion, the negative part. Okay, now remember, subscripts are crisscrossed. So if we take a look at number five, the two actually came from the iron. So that must mean that this is iron, parentheses, two. Okay, same thing here. The three must have come from iron. Okay, so that must mean that's iron three in parentheses. So it looks like I did those appropriately as well. Okay, now zinc. Zinc is a transition metal, but it's on our list because it automatically has a charge of a plus two. Okay, it automatically has a charge of a plus two. So we don't have to do anything with zinc. Zinc is good. Beryllium, good. Chromium, okay, that's a transition metal. To get the charge, I reverse the crisscross. So that must mean that if it's F2, that 2 came from chromium. So that must mean that that's chromium. And then that's a 2 in parentheses. Number 10 is aluminum, or aluminium, and that is automatically a, a plus 3. So it's not a transition metal either. Okay, so, so far I've done all of the cation work. Now I have to worry about my negatives, my anions. Okay, so number one, CO3. That is one of those polyatomic ions. It's carbonate. So carbonate, that means that that entire compound is sodium carbonate. Nice and easy. All right, next, NaOH, the OH, that is hydroxide. That means that is sodium hydroxide. MgBr, Br is bromide. Remember, the ending changes to ide whenever we're looking at those monatomic ions. Um, potassium, and then Cl is chloride. Cl is chloride. Cl again, chloride. Cl again, chloride. OH again hydroxide, SO4, that's sulfate, F, that is fluoride, and then S, that is sulfide. Okay, notice the spelling of these two. Sulfate is a polyatomic ion, it's SO4 with a minus 2 charge. Sulfide is sulfur, it's a monatomic ion, and it is just sulfur with a minus two, okay? So notice the difference between those two. It sometimes throws people off. So I have successfully named each of these substances. Just to review, I'm gonna go through all of the names. Sodium carbonate for number one, sodium hydroxide for number two, magnesium bromide for number three, potassium chloride for number four, iron 2 chloride for number 5, iron 3 chloride for number 6, zinc hydroxide for number 7, beryllium sulfate for number 8, 
For number nine, we have chromium-2 fluoride. And for number 10, we have aluminum sulfide. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is going to be the last part of your assignment. Copy down these 10, okay, on the same paper that you've been filling out the other part that we already filled in, okay? So if you need to pause it, that's fine because we're going to immediately be going through the answers to these. Just like before, I'm going to go through all of the metals first, so all of the sort of positively charged uh, ions, and then I'm going to sort of crisscross it with the negative part, with the anions, okay? So first things first, we've got sodium. Sodium is Na. It has a plus one charge. It is an alkali metal. Magnesium, it's an alkaline earth metal. That's a two plus. Lead two is a two plus. In this situation, it tells me it's lead two, so I have to just assume that it is a two plus. Calcium is an also an alkaline earth metal. Ammonium, okay, that's one of my polyatomic ions. It's NH4 with a plus. Silver, that is a transition metal. What is its charge? It is one of the ones that always has the same charge, just like zinc. Um, it is a plus one, though, okay? Aluminum or aluminum, that's a three plus, okay? Beryllium. That's a 2 plus. Copper 1 must mean that that's just a plus. Iron 3, okay? That must be a 3 plus. Now let's do the negative parts. All right, phosphide, okay? That means that it's a monatomic element because it ends in ide. Phosphorus has a 3 minus. Nitrate, okay, nitrate is one of those polyatomic ions. It's NO3 minus. Fluoride, it's a halogen, it has a minus one charge. Phosphate, notice again the difference, phosphide, phosphate. Phosphate is a polyatomic ion. Sulfate, okay, also a polyatomic ion, SO4 with a two minus. Oxide, O with a two minus, oxygen has a minus two. Sulfide, okay, notice again the difference between sulfate and sulfide. Sulfide is just sulfur with the two minus. Chloride, Cl minus. Nitrate, NO3 minus. Oxide again, two minus. Now what do I do? I crisscross these charges, okay? So that means for the very top one, sodium phosphide, I get Na, and that 3 comes down here, I get Na3P. That means I have three sodiums, I have one phosphide ion, and it is now electrically neutral. Okay? Next, magnesium nitrate. Mg, and then I have an NO3, and the 2 has to come down here. Now, what does that mean? Okay, if I have NO3 2, it looks like I have 32 oxygens. Okay, that must mean I have to put that ion in parentheses. NO3 2. The way I always describe it is, it looks kind of weird if you were to have NO3 2 and not have a parenthesis around it, but remember, it's acting as a unit. So that means I have one magnesium, I have two nitrate ions. All right, lead 2 fluoride. The 2 goes down here. That means that's PBF2. I have one lead. I have two fluoride ions. Calcium phosphate. The two goes down here. The three goes over there. So it should be CA3. PO42. Same exact thing. I need parentheses. Otherwise, it would look like I have 42 oxygens. Ammonium sulfate. Ammonium is the only positive polyatomic ion, and it's the only one that can start with a parenthesis, and it only happens if, you know, you have to put a 2 or a 3 or something in front of it. So NH4, the 2 has to go down, so that must mean I have NH4, 2. Why do I need parentheses? It would look like I had 42 hydrogens, which we know isn't the case. So I have NH4, 2, SO4. Next, silver oxide. 
the 2 has to go down there. That's Ag, 2, O. I have two silvers. I have one oxygen. Next, aluminum sulfide. I crisscross. I get Al, 2, S, 3. I have two aluminums. I have three sulfides. Next, beryllium chloride. The 2 has to go down there. I have Be, Cl, 2. One beryllium, two chlorides. Copper one nitrate, nice and easy, CuNO3. If the number of the charges of both of them is the same, I don't have to crisscross anything. Iron three oxide, again, I have to crisscross my charges. That means that's Fe2O3. So hopefully that clarifies any problems that you might have. Uh, if you have other questions, feel free to ask me tomorrow. Um, but that's pretty much it for ionic compounds.